In this video, we are going to compare SciSpace's new literature review tool to Elicit's literature review tool so that you can see which one do you really want to be using. To get started, they are both free tools. So we're not comparing pricing here. We're literally comparing the features and how well they are performing and being able to get you the most relevant literature to your question. So in this case, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to ask them the exact same question. Now, I'm going to start with a field that I know well, and it's a field I talk on this channel a lot about. And some people have said, you know, can you talk about other things? The reason I want to use this field as a comparison for these AI tools is that I know this field well. So I can very quickly tell if it's giving me incorrect information, where if I just pick a random field or one that I don't know as well, there's a good chance that I won't know if it's giving me that correct or incorrect information. So I'm going to ask it, what? techniques are used to separate steroid isomers in ion mobility spectrometry. So I'm asking it a very, very specific question here, not just a general topic. So I'm going to go ahead and search that here and paste it into Elicit and search as well. So you can see Elicit's taking just a little bit longer to be able to get results, but they overall are about the same amount of time in the results that they give. And so we can pop this out over here to get uh, their information up here. And so essentially this gives us a insight from the top five papers and this gives us a summary of the top four papers here. And we can look into this. Um, I'm gonna read it real quick and just give you the highlights of how accurate it is and things like that. So overall, this is saying that twins is a um, technique using metal adduction that is uh, true. Another technique is trapped ion mobility spectrometry, which is TEMS. That's also true. And then it's talking about twins with derivatization, and that is the correct paper for that. And then lastly, LC coupled with IMS, and it is uh, doing my paper. But you can see that it's citing the same paper um, as Journal of Chromatography A and Journal of Chromatography B. This paper was published in Journal of Chromatography B, not A. So um, that is interesting. It's citing it almost incorrectly. I will say over here, this is much more like ancient research. So you can see 2008, 2016, 2013, and 1990. This is kind of the like just getting into analyzing steroids with eye mobility is this description versus this one's much more recent. A lot of this is my work or work that I cited whenever I was in this field. So. The next part that I want to compare is what are the actual papers that it gives us? So we can see over here, it's giving us, um, one, these are recent papers, 2019, 2020, a little bit older one, but still important, 2020, 2019. So it is a little bit more recent papers. And these are a lot of the same papers that I actually cite within this review here. Whereas over here, we're getting older papers for sure. And honestly, not as relevant to the steroids plus ion mobility section. So you can see that this is just small molecules. This is like a really good review on ion mobility and mass spectrometry, but not as specific to steroids. And it actually takes us a while. So here is where we actually start getting steroids and ion mobility. And then it just goes back to ion mobility spectrometry. So that brings us into the next thing, which is filters. So over in SciSpace's literature review, you can filter by whether the paper has a PDF, is open access, the publication type, and the publication year. So I'm going to set these years to the last five years so that we can um, kind of reanalyze this as well. And then on elicits, we get a little bit different. So if you have filter, you can also um, set the year. So I can say it was published after 2018 would be the equivalent to the last five years over there. And then you can do the study type. So you can actually specify whether it was a review, systematic analysis, or meta-analysis. So that can be helpful if you are trying to find specific reviews versus if you're just looking for any kind of information that's related to it. 
So the other thing I'm going to do to help us is I'm going to say the abstract includes the keyword steroid. And that is just to try and make this a little bit more accurate. This is a filter that Elicit has that the SciSpace Literature Review does not have, is being able to filter down two specific keywords to make sure that this actually does talk about the keywords in this. So even though Elicit originally gave us papers that weren't as relevant, we can now um, kind of lower it down again to get papers that at least contain steroids to increase the relevancy. Basically, now what I want to do is kind of compare the actual papers that it gave me. So yeah, those first two aren't even in there at all. This is a duplicate here. So these are two these are the exact same paper. And for some reason, it thinks that there are two different papers here. And so I don't even think that one was included in this one in the top 10. Steroid analysis by IM Mobilities included over there. It's not included over here. Um, this ozone induced that is included in both. Formation of multimeric steroids is included in both. Let's see, rapid IM mobility is not. And then estradiol glucuronides. So improve the paterno buki reaction was included and this one was included. So I would say about half of the papers that you got were the same between both and their top 10 papers. Now you could add more and you would probably start getting a much closer pool, but you're getting about half the papers different between these two different techniques of finding research articles. What I will say is that this one included a lot of my papers, so along the same kind of line of thought. So you can see um, there's one, two, this is the same paper, three, four, five of my papers within here, where this one doesn't include near as many. I think it only includes two, one, two. Yeah, it only includes two of my papers. So I would say that Elicit's going broader and SciSpace's literature review tool, at least in their top 10, is going a little bit deeper than broader on one um, type of analysis instead of the broadness of the different techniques used. So you can also sort with both of these. So with Elicit, we have a sort by the title. So this is going to be alphabetical, the abstract summary, whether it has a PDF or not, the year and the citations. And this is going to sort by relevance, citation, um, the year is going to be the same, and then alphabetically. So very similar uh, sorting ability with both of these, and you can also filter on Elicit if it has a PDF or not. So the next thing I wanna talk about is what type of information can you get from these? So I think a benefit to using these tools is essentially that it is actually pulling information from these articles for you in kind of a table format. So you can see if I scroll over here, so I'm just gonna open up this one a little bit more so that we can see. So you can see that it already pops up with an abstract summary here, but then you have all these different options over here and you can search for even more. So you can do the intervention, the outcomes measured, and the number of participants. And then you can search for even more. So if you click in here, you can see how many more that you can do. A detailed abstract summary, main findings, and you can even write your own question in here as well. And so when we look at this, we can see that like the intervention can be really helpful in seeing what was actually analyzed. So this metal adduction and multimerization, that's accurate. I actually have not read this paper, so I'm not going to comment on that one. Um, the paterno buki reaction um, is accurate. This one is accurate as well. And then ozonolysis. And then it has the outcomes measured. So the ability to separate steroids, the CCSs of the species, and distinct features for each steroid component. That is accurate in what happened there. And then separation of estradiol glucuronides using TWIMS MS. That's accurate because that's my paper. Um, quantitation of the relative composition of the two isomers using tandem mass spectrometry. That was kind of the real big novel point of this paper. This paper is a communication. And then uh, percentage of each isomer present in the mixture was what we used, um, what our metric was. So you can get a lot of these different information over here and you can easily just pull it out. So you can even get what organisms were included and things like that as well, or ask your own questions. Let's look at SciSpaces. So SciSpace has specific columns that you can add on. 
and you can see them here. So it's insights is automatically added in. TLDR is basically a summary. You have an abstract summary, summary similar to elicit, the conclusions, which is similar to elicit, results, summarized introduction, method used, literature survey is, I don't think elicit has something like that. You can maybe write your own, but those aren't as well fine tuned. Limitations is similar, contributions and practical implications. So I think overall you're getting similar things between these two within the table and whether how accurate it is. So let's see if we can find that formation since, that, since that's in both. So this one has, eye mobility has shown promise for steroid, uh, separation of steroids when coupled with metal induction and multimerization. And over here we have I am ability spectrometry as coupled to mass spectrometry has significant promise. So they're basically saying the same thing there. Um, I wouldn't say that one is doing like a crazy better job than the other one at giving you that information. Again, whenever you're working with AI, you always want to make sure you're double checking this before you go and cite it or use it and make sure that that information is correctly coming from that source. So the one benefit of SciSpace's tool over Elicits is that they've integrated their co-pilot, which is basically their AI research assistant chatbot into this. So you can use the chatbot down here, the co-pilot, to ask questions about all of these papers at once. You can somewhat do that in elicits, basically just asking a question here, but you can't really get that back and forth. Either it does it or it doesn't. And what I found is a lot of times when you're asking general questions, you can't get as specific information. It just won't populate, which is better than it just giving you inaccurate information. You can say, how do these people papers enhance the existing knowledge in their field. This is one way to be able to build from this knowledge and, and get additional information coming from it. And this is something that you can't do in Elicit. So it may be a little bit more helpful to do something like this when you're trying to build or think through something and you want to chat to a chatbot about these papers. And then final, the final thing that I want to test between these two is their ability to export or save this information. So one of the benefits of Copilot is that you can save your searches so you can access these later on if you need them, where there isn't really a way to save your searches within um, Elicit as of now. Um, hopefully with being able to log in, they're going to create ways to save your searches. But right now there's not really a way to save your search within the website itself. Now, both of these do have a way to export the information out. So if you click these three dots here, you can export their CSV. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. If you come over to Elicit, you can export as a bib text file. So this is good if you just wanna throw it in Zotero or something like that, or as a CSV similar to um, what SciSpace does. So I do wanna show you these two real quick. So this is SciSpaces, and you can see that it did bring down those different columns there. I'm just going to expand this. So it did bring down these columns, but you can see for most of the additional columns, there's no information in here at all. It's not pulling down that information. It's only really pulling down the insights and maybe some of, if not even really the conclusion. So basically only the insights and the TLDR is the information it's successfully pulling down um, from that table. It does give you the authors, whether it's open access, the publication, PDF link, DOI, institutions, all of that stuff. But if you wanna get that information in the bulk of the paper, that's not really there with SciSpace's current export tool. They can update this and make it a little bit better. The other thing with this is they don't have a bid text export. Now you can save these uh, individual PDFs to your SciSpace library. You can save them using this bookmark here and be able to access it that, that way as well. So if we look at Elicit's results, you can see that we get the paper title, abstract summary, um, authors, journals, PDF, citations, all those similar things we were getting from SciSpace's tool. And you even have the semantic scholar URL there, but we're also able to get those columns that we added to it. So you can see we're getting that abstract, we're getting the um, intervention used, the number of participants was blank for a lot of these in that column, the study type wasn't added in, and the outcomes measured here. So you can actually pull down that information if you add more and more columns, I've done this a lot, you can pull that information down. 
So getting that summarized information out of the websites, I would say Elicit is a little bit better at doing that right now. Um, but both of these can be used in a complementary way. As you saw, only about half the papers overlapped. Obviously you could keep doing show more, but it might not be a bad idea to search both of these systems and use them to get a more comprehensive look. You can also be able to look at how well are they pulling the information from it and, and look at those different columns. And you can see where something is clashing. That can be a first instinct that, oh, maybe the AI isn't generating correct information here. I need to dig deeper. I would suggest doing that anyways, but it may not be a bad idea to check out both of these softwares. I will have both of them linked in the description below. And if you're struggling with learning your field and figuring out how to read your research papers or what research papers you should read, I will have my 30-day research jumpstart guide included in the description below as well. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.